to my channel. Good morning vlogs. Just lick a cup. I know. Let me take a sip. And I'll tell you all about it. Ah. Mm. Today's early bird is brought to you by peppermint mocha. Jim's like, he called me yesterday. I was waiting. Well, not as when he was leaving work, and he said, "I realized I gave you the rest of your creamer this morning." Um, did you want me to stop and get some? I was like, honey, it's Monday. Just don't, just come home. I said, but you told me I had a ton of creamer. He's like, yeah, well, pumpkin spice. And I was like, oh, well, I'll just have pumpkin spice tomorrow. I don't, I like pumpkin spice and I like the peppermint mocha. I just can't have them two cups in a day because they give me indigestion. I mean, on, on, on the contrary, kind of, is a little disappointing that I don't get it every day because I can have it every day. I just can't have it two times in a day. If that makes any sense. So, um, he said he might stop today. I'm sorry I'm doing that with my teeth. I was actually very hungry this morning. It's really early. It's just a little after seven. But I was actually slept and I actually was hungry this morning. And I said, would you get my coffee in a cup? Um, because I'm going to sit up and vlog early because I slept and I felt good. I had a keto yogurt with blueberry. My sister bought me this four pack of strawberry keto yogurt. Um, actually, not to be like, I don't spit in the garbage can or anything. It's actually a clean garbage can because yesterday was garbage day. But it looks like that. Um, and a cup of blueberries, which was so good. I don't know where she got these blueberries from. I feel like they were from Walmart, but so good not tart they were sweet the only problem is you got sometimes the little blueberry seeds are everywhere yeah. everywhere so you're like did i get blueberry seeds in my teeth <laughs> but i slept really good last night i feel really good um i feel like the the two or three days of just like well rest or minimal work minimal physical work rest and what have you then it was pretty good i really want to get some decorating done i may have to spend even more time in my space than originally anticipated um what i mean by that is like as my immune system becomes more and more compromised uh, we don't know what the immunotherapy will do for me until like three months out. Um, it's probably best that I don't sit outside too much in the living room because of all of the smoke. You know, normally the smoke didn't bother me, but you know, now it's different. I'm on all this medication that's lowering my immune system and I don't want to get any type of like bronchitis. I used to, I was very susceptible to bronchitis when I was younger. Actually, I actually suffered from chronic bronchitis when I was younger, but you know, I lived with a lot of people who smoked. There was a lot of secondhand smoke in my house growing up. I'm kind of surprised I have lungs. No, um, I know I said it before. There was from, from my father quit smoking when he retired in uh, 1998. And he, I moved here in 2013. So for 15 out of my 51 years, so 36 out of my 51 years, I lived with a smoker. <laughs> Excuse me. That is a very long time. <laughs> um, and it's not just the time as much as it was that um, the development of my lungs, I guess, at the time. You know, part of it, we often say, is it genes that causes obesity, obesity that causes, you know, the 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 disease, you know. Or for me, it it's like I could never run very far because I had chronic bronchitis, which means then it made me be even less physically active I can't imagine how would be less physically active, but, um, but like in gym, you know, I was, um, 
I looked like the stereotypical fat kid who couldn't do anything more than the 50 yard dash. The 50 yard dash was the extent of, of my running. Um, that's why I, I hit a lot of doubles and then home runs because that was it. I had to get to second base or I'm going to stop at first or going all the way home and nobody's going to catch that ball. But that was a rarity. But it did happen. Um, and it wasn't like I couldn't do the running. It was the recovery time from the running. Um, but I wonder now as an adult, and I know better, that, you know, living in a house with smokers. I think I mentioned before that I slept in the living room. Um, till I was 18. I mean, I, I think there was a, I had a, and I don't think, you know, I had a crib when I was little and I think I was in the room when I was a toddler, but pretty much I want to say like school age, maybe like six, maybe six. Yeah, because PJ and Tom still live there, so um, I started sleeping out in the living room on the couch. Just, you know, space. Um, and oddly enough, it's really funny because as an adult uh, in my 20s, if I would fall asleep in the living room after having been sleeping in my bedroom for like five years or whatever, after falling asleep in the living room, I would wake up and it would feel like my lungs would be like dry cleaned. That's the only way I can describe them. I could take like these really deep, clear breaths and it was weird, but like clear, but full. I, I, I don't know how to describe it, honest to God, but it used to be weird. I'd be like, oh, it's so weird. I can breathe so differently out here than I do in my room. Now... Was that a dusty mold situation? Because, uh, again, not knowing any better when we were younger, we lived real close to the ocean and we didn't have central air conditioning because poor people. And, um, you know, just things like were damp, whether we wanted to or not. You know, we lived one block away from the bay, but like half a mile from the ocean or a mile. Might have been a mile to the ocean. Yeah, it might have been. I have to think about it. maybe two. Is it two miles? I think I feel like we measured it one time. But anyway, we lived on an island in a channel bay area, separated by a channel, basically. That's what, let me say that. We lived on an island separated by a channel from another island that was between us and the ocean. You can look on a map and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um. Anyway... Everything was very damp and it just was musty. What you know, whether we wanted to or not, you couldn't really store stuff under your bed long term because then it would just get musty and you know, in your closets and you know, all the cedar and moth bowls in the world would not take the must away if you left things for too long and didn't air things out properly. So and of course we didn't know that when we were growing up necessarily. I mean, you know, my parents had a lot on their plates, so dealing with you know, musty closets was on the back, back, back burner on the stove that was in this, you know, we'd be like, it was on the back burner of a stove that was in the neighbor's house that lived across the street. Like, that's how far out of what touch it was. Importance. But, um, yeah, it was, it was, um, it was, it was definitely experience. But now I wonder, as I'm older now, and I realize that is, was it like, I know I'm allergic to uh, leaf mold and mildew. And so like, was sleeping in the living room better air quality after everybody stopped smoking in the living room? I, I don't know. I really don't know. You know, like it just, it was weird. So anyway. Growing up only smokers, you'd think I get used to it, but, and I don't, that's why the smell doesn't bother me as much. I will tell you the truth. Sometimes my mother-in-law comes out of her room after her, you can tell she has just put down a cigarette and it kind of comes with her and she leaves the door open and it wafts into the space. 
it can get overwhelming. Like I'll, I'll, I'll actually like either cover my mouth with my shirt and it's not to be like, that offends me. It's more like, you know, like, you know, it's overwhelming looking for gasping for clean air. <laughs> um, but it just usually only lasts for a few minutes because then it starts to like dissipate. It kind of like rushes in with her and then it starts to dissipate. But anyway, I, at this point with my immune, immune, with my immune system, then I don't know if I can be out there as much. Um, I am going to, um, I did take advantage of it while my sister was here and the weather was nice. When we know we can open the house up is a different story, but it's, Today's high is uh, 60 degrees, so it's not really an open the house kind of a day. And I don't know that it's going to get much warmer. We'll have much warmer days between now and Thanksgiving, but we'll see. You never know. Um, so I will be spending more time in here, and I just, I need, this is what I need. I need to look at a space that I enjoy if I'm going to have to look at a space. Now, I do want to decorate back here, but... Mainly that's for like my, I want to be able to look over and see pretty things. But when I edit and for the background, I just want to be able to like feel the joy and the love like I do with my blanket. You know, I, I feel like the blanket is a hug from Michelle uh, and inspiration. I, I, I go get them girl kind of punch in the arm, not a punch in the arm, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Excuse me. That wasn't an itch. That was a runny nose. Um, ah, poop. I hate when you drop the cap. Um, but, um, like I want to make the space a little like, hmm, zener, if that makes any sense. I also want to add a little cushion to the cushion because it's very, very firm, which is good quality, but, you know, it's not the most comfortable under your tush tush when you have to sit here for a long time. Rest of it's fine. I have this um, lumbar pillow that I got. Oh gosh, I think we got it on clearance at Cracker Barrel after Christmas. Um, I bought it for Jim's office when we first moved here. Um, it's uh, red with pine cones on it, and it's like a wool, like a woven. What they 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 have a name for it. That's not tufted, because tufted wool is like that. Well, that's felted. Oh, so it is tufted wool. So it's like when the, when you, oh, let me just show it to you. What am I doing? I could, I could stand to be without the lumbar pillow for two minutes. You see how it's like this? And it's pretty, right? It's got pine cones and it's red. Um, I really wish I had my red chair cover. I'm gonna still, I'm still holding out hope. Jimmy said there's one more place he has to check. And we have a couple of the bags of, of clothes that we were giving away that he told me never actually made it to give away that they're actually in the utility room. So knock wood that it's in there um, just because they're expensive and don't buy me one. <laughs> I, I picked out a few on Amazon that are a little less expensive, but um, my sister was saying, just get some fitted twin size fitted sheets to go over there so that you can throw them in the wash and as you sweat, you can collect them or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm not really there yet where I'm just like pouring out sweat on my chair. But I see what she's saying because it happens on the bed sometimes. Um, but they're expensive too. I was like, even Walmart doesn't have cheap. They used to have like, you could buy the individual sheets, you know, for $2.50. You could buy like a cheap cotton fitted sheet. Um, not the case anymore, I guess, because... Um, they're like 10 bucks plus. Um, so we're shopping around. I'm shopping around. I'll tell you that. I, um, sorry. I can't tell if my ring is on upside down. Um, this particular ring has a direction. So it's like, um, I'm also, one of the things I've been doing on my downtime is, I, I want to get a new pair of boots. 
I know I I look I know I shouldn't be spending the money we have medical bills piling up and though the hospitals all have financial services for that to help out and stuff I understand and uh you know it the thing is <laughs> is that like I don't have any control over anything at this point. I I can't cook myself. I can control what I put in my mouth, but I'm not really supposed to be cooking because I'm not supposed to be standing at the stove for very long. And my walker and chairs in my house aren't tall enough to cook sitting down um, safely, to be honest with you. I mean, I know people do it all the time. I don't feel very safe doing it. Um... I could cook at the instant pot at the table, but I'm told that I'm not supposed to be doing that right now. That being said, I can't control that. I can control what goes in my mouth, but I can't always get what I want food-wise when I want it. Or what will satisfy me, I guess is really what I'm saying. Um, I can't go out and do what I want to do. I can't just get in the car and go. I can't just visit people, like pop into somebody's car and just drive, go visit somebody. I I can't even decorate my space by myself. Shopping on the internet is like what I'm doing. And I'm not buying. Remember, there's a very different difference between shopping and buying. Huge difference, okay? Um... But just shopping, just the thought of, of life when, when life was like, hmm, you know, I'll tell you the truth. I've been on the market for this pair of boots. I had a pair of boots that I, I've always wanted a pair. Okay, let me go back. I always wanted a pair of riding boots. I always wanted a pair of riding boots since I was, I don't know, since the 80s, since the early, early 80s, I guess. Long skirts and riding boots, those women who would ride side saddle and that kind of thing. That was very much what I, the look I was going for. And it would became kind of popular in the, I don't know, mid to late eighties. And then again, in the mid to early nineties. Um, but because of being, having big calves and really that's what it is. I mean, I have large feet for a woman. I'm a size 10, but, um, Having big calves is oh, nine and a half wide, but wides weren't always available, so it was always a 10. But having big calves is really what it was. Well, I guess before I met Jim, so I'm going to say the early, the mid to late 90s, maybe the mid 90s, I found a pair of boots and I want to say they were from like Roman's catalog or a woman within catalog and they were... They had a suede upper, like this, the boot itself was suede and they had a little heel, not much, but the entire shaft was a sweater. So you could pull them up and it was black on black and you could pull them up and, and they would look like a regular riding boot. You could scrunch them down. They would look like a, 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 a ruched, a crunched boot or a ruched boot. You could fold it over. And it looked like you had on like the, the cute little socks on the top. I loved them. Loved them. Hashtag obsessed. We talk about things that got lost in the flood. And there are some things that I'm disappointed about. And there's some things I'm really sad about. Like I had a memory box that got wet in the flood and then accidentally I think got thrown out and it had some precious precious memories in it this is just right below that like just well right above that like not quite as sad as that but these boots like out of all of my clothing items and shoes and stuff I was so sad and here's the here's the kicker it was the end of October right and it just 
like was about to start to get cold. Um, but it was still hurricane season, so it was still warm. So if you can kind of imagine. I feel like had the hurricane come two weeks later, which it wouldn't have because it would have been too cold at that point. My boots would have been at the apartment with me because I would have taken them to the apartment. <laughs> and not been in my closet where boots are stored. <laughs> But it is what it is, and that's what happened. But anyway, ever since then, I've been on the hunt. And they were the only time I've ever seen them. I mean, the only pair of boots that I've ever seen. Now, I've seen boots that have, like, the faux socks, sweater socks sticking out of the top. And then I've seen ones that look like, like, I just saw a really cute paste pair of, like, faux lace-up ones. That behind the lace-up is, like, kind of like a sweater or sock. It's really cute. But really, none of them... Or that and it's very difficult um, if I buy boots that fit my shaft um, of my calf the, I'm sorry the shaft fits my calf and sometimes it's like too bulky around my ankle and I can get blisters really because my feet will move inside there and then if I find them that fit my feet they won't fit my calf even with the elastic I'm just built that way um, I don't always have cankles let's just put it that way i have really big calves and big feet and i and they taper in quite a lot comparatively relatively speaking um, my ankles taper in quite a lot so it can cause oppose a problem you know i almost feel like if i had cankles it'd be a different story then i could fill those boots out better so back on the hunt for riding boots but the shopping part is really fun just on the hunt and Today I forgot about the Avenue and I got an email from the Avenue and their boots were 60% off and I was like, duh. And they had so many to choose from. It was amazing. So many to choose from. Um, and then I realized that there are resources that I haven't even tapped into. I never even looked on Amazon for plus size wide shaft boots. Like I've just been looking at clothing stores that I know carry shoes. Mm. Like, I looked at Torrid and Lane Bryant and obviously the woman within catalog, family of catalogs. Um, but it's a lot of fun to shop. Again, it's not buying, it's shopping. The same thing with the slipcover for the chair. Trying to find, the hunt is the best. Trying to find the best quality, the best price. The one that I love, the one that I like. I really just wanted the red solid one. And I'll tell you the truth. They have a ton on Amazon that are really like not very expensive. The stretchy kind. But they all have patterns on them. <laughs> Which normally I'd be like, oh, cute. Except I'm like, oh, okay. Hmm. I just, did, I just didn't think I wanted more pattern in my room, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I do actually have an order together for the um, the Women Within Catalog family has a catalog called Bry Lane Home. I know I've told you guys that I bought stuff there from the past or in the past. They usually have very good clearance, but I actually found what I think might be the perfect rug for my bedside. Okay, so let me tell you about my bedside rug. When we were gonna put down the floors, Jimmy's like, but what about a rug when you first step out of the door? I said, Jimmy, don't you remember when we lived at the house? At, at the house where I grew up, we always referred to it as 481. At 481, we had, we bought runners. You buy runners, we bought them like, like, I think the first ones we got for, were from like a place like Odd Lot, Odd Job, which is kind of like, I don't know, do you have Ollie's by you? Or do you have like, um. Oh gosh, what kind of place? It's it's not Marshalls. It's it's like a step down from that. Almost like um. Hmm. I can't even think of what else to compare it. All the things that I know about are in New York. It was like Nationwide Warehouse and just places that have like stuff that's fell off the truck. And I don't mean like stolen fall off the truck, but like literally like scratch and dent stuff or overstock stuff like that. So I think the first 
runners we got were from there, like cheap. Um, and then we ended up getting a set at Kohl's. When Kohl's opened by us, um, we ended up getting a set from there. They were having like cash back, big promo, big sale. And I was like, oh, these were really nice. So we basically got runners. That's if you're ever looking, if, if you have all the clearance in the world and you're ever looking for like bedside rugs for your feet, the runners are the best way to go because you can decide to sit at the end of your bed or your husband, can, you know what I mean? Like you have options. It's not, you don't just have this one spot to get in and out of your floor. That being said, I don't have the space for a runner right now. I actually have a space for a teeny tiny rug. And I want to get a bath type rug because they have the rubber grips on the bottom. And I need to have it not slide around on me. Uh, when I roll the walker, if I have to roll the walker over it, it needs to be able to roll over it and not slide on it. Um, basically, I have to keep myself from slipping if possible. So I know that I'm not a slipper and I'm not a faller, but hey, I also never had cancer before, but you know, just saying. So, um, but I found a really cute rug and it was just like, I think it was $9.99 and it's got all these like beautiful roses on them. It's be it's really pretty. And, um, it's just like the perfect size. I think, um, Jim, <clears throat> I put a note for him when he comes home to bring me the tape measure and let's see exactly like my eyeballs want to say, yes, it's perfect, but I, I don't really trust them as much these days. Um, and I found a, do you guys know what chucks are? Um, they're like, if you have ever helped a senior or took care of a senior, it's basically like a thin plastic, kind of like a, a wee wee pad for a puppy. It's kind of like a thin plastic with like a, an absorbent material covered by almost like if, if you took a really, really, really thin adult diaper and just opened it into a big square. Well, they have one here that is like a washable like a washable one like absorbent and it's got like waterproof padding on it and it's just perfect for the chair right now i am not having any ill effects from the medication but i'm still very new on it so i'm kind of like trying to prepare for it but i figured this would be good that even if um even like if when treatment's over then you know I'm getting older and mom's getting older and maybe we'll just keep it in the house, whatever, you know, but basically it's like a washable one of those. Like I found just a bunch of things that I'm like, this would be good to have, but I really have to discuss the purchase with my husband and look at my budget and that kind of stuff. And that's, you know, that's where, that's where we're at with it. But mostly I just do shopping. I do very little buy. What did I buy lately? My new combler. That's my big purchase for the month of October was I bought my combler. <laughs> um, Jim let me, well, technically Jim bought me clothes that I ordered from Torrid. Um, we were discussing it and I said I never really got anything for my birthday. Um, and I had lost like 50 pounds in like no time and my underwear were falling down so I bought a couple pairs of underwear I got a new hoodie I think I got I think I showed you guys but I just so he let me buy some clothes and um I mean that was but that was a month ago so October my big purchase was a brand new compliment and I love it I love it it's just like game changer it makes it so easy to remember to take your medication. And remember if you did take your medication, which bonus. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. I fed you already. You have a problem? Let's go. We'll take it outside. So a port update. Here's what it's looking like today. My sister said it looks more bruised, but I think what it is is that this area here was like, you could tell that it was going to bruise and you could tell that the bruising was going to come to the surface because I had the little pin dots. Um, usually that's an indication to me that there's been some sort of trauma, but you could just tell like the bruising was going to come up 
um and i guess it looks like that today this is port update 2021 um we are getting ready for halloween you know jim was like i'm gonna decorate this weekend i'm gonna decorate last this last weekend i'm gonna decorate this weekend I'm gonna, i said to be honest with you jim let me tell you something there were times at 481 where I would come home from work and I would throw all the decor on the porch before the trick-or-treaters got there. Like truly, truly, that was how it went sometimes. Because time, you know, just because time. And I was like, I'm not going to hold you to a different standard than I held myself to back then. I was like, if we, you know, we have... The ghosts that I bought at the Dollar Tree hanging up on the porch and I think a rug out. The real reason I wanted to do the outside decor is I have a couple of signs that tell the kids to come to the front door, not to come to the carport door or to the utility room door in the carport, like which door to actually come to. So that's my big concern. My big concern is that the kids will try to knock on whatever door and it's hard because for some reason, and it's one of the things that I've wanted to change since we moved in, the person who put the doorbells in put both wires to the same doorbell. That's okay. It's not a bad thing. However, you just don't know what door people are at. Um, and only one door has glass so that you could see. But if the person stepped to the left or the right two inches, you can't see that they're standing at that door anyway, so... Uh, the good news is they're pretty close together. The bad news is they're pretty far apart when it comes to people just like not having the patience to wait. So anyway, so that's why we always try to direct people to the front door. So when I hear the doorbell, I know exactly. Or if I hear a knock, I know exactly where it's coming from. But I said, you know, the, the, the uh, I said, we'll hang out the flag for sure. That takes like all of 10 minutes and it's not buried. You know, we have a, the Halloween flag. Um... We have some ghosties up there. I um, can get to Halloween wreaths fairly easy because they're in the wreath bag in the closet. And I was like, let's just put a wreath. We'll put a wreath on the door. Worst case scenario is, you know, we'll do a few different things. But you know, I said it, it'll be okay. Whatever it is. Look, we have the candy. The kids will come. It'll be okay. Because I really wanted to get some projects done in here. And the weekend before was kind of like, Jim needed the weekend off. We realized that now. At the beginning, I just thought he was upset with me or something and didn't want to do anything uh, that I had was asking him if he could do for me. Um, but it turns out he just needed a de-stressor weekend and, and that's okay. I'm always just trying to get him to communicate with me so we're on the same page. Um. It's a problem with, I don't know about your marriage, but mine's a, like, I'm an over communicator. He's an under communicator. Like I over talk and he under talks like, come on, we just, can we get this together here? <laughs> um, but I needed to get some things done in here, like switching out the purifier and getting my, getting the nightstands changed. Like this, this to me was more important because this affects how I spend my days. I spend my days in this room and and it's important that i don't become depressed thinking like this cancer could take me in less than five years or i might just have like five years left or whatever i guess that was more a, that's a better way of saying it or whatever but that doesn't depress me as much as like my space or 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 just feeling like ugh. I'm miserable about this space. So I would really like to get the decor done. That's what I was telling him. I was like, I did want to do a little project before my sister came home. She, or she's not coming home. Before my sister came back, um, she had a, a request for something to be done in her room. So I wanted to get that done before she got back so that, I could be out of her space. Plus there's a project that I need to do in there from before. If you guys remember, we swapped jewelry boxes with our friend 
and we downsized a lot of the jewelry, but we never actually organized the jewelry in there. And it's in a place where I can get to and I can sit with my walker and I can do that sitting down and it's something I need to do. So I said I wanted to do that one day this week. So I feel like that might be all. Oh, uh, just a side note. I have these pajamas. I have them in, as you know, nightgowns and pajamas. I have this as a tank top and shorts. I have them in capris and tank tops. I have them in t-shirts and pants. I have them in t-shirts and capris. <laughs> I have them in t-shirts and shorts and capris. <sighs> anyway, they're all made of the same material. They're rayon, 95% rayon or 5% spandex. What I've come to realize over the course of owning them is the more you dry them, and especially if you bleach them and dry them, they become very thick and not as silky and not as uh, movement friendly. So we haven't been putting them in the dryer. I've just been asking Jimmy if he can just tumble dry them, um, wash them separate and just tumble dry them. And that's fine, except they're not shrinking. And I mean that by like, when you wear a nightgown and it stretches out, even if you don't lose weight, you wear a nightgown and you stretch it out and then it doesn't shrink back into its original shape because you haven't dried it and then it's fallen off your shoulders. And then the top, the tank top is falling off your shoulders. So I just thought it was like a funny side note to like first world problems. First world problems. Yep. Today's headband is brought to you by the Dollar Tree. I think all of them are. I have a couple. I have one that's from Five Below. I have a couple that are from other places, but most of them are from the Dollar Tree. The one with the big roses on it, the lacy one, that was not from the Dollar Tree. Um, you know, where did I get that from? I feel like I got that at like a boutique or something. It was in New York for sure. I don't think it was Hot Topic, but I feel like it was a boutique. But like, it was on clearance or whatever. Mm. Pepper McMulkin is the shiznit, man. But I think that's it for today. I, oh, no, it's not. The one thing I really want to talk about. My Aunt Mary called me last night. Now, I didn't tell you a funny story. One day, last week or the week before... I remember where we were headed to the doctor, but um, I was getting in the car and I accidentally FaceTimed my Aunt Mary. So bizarre. And I hear, like, I'm trying to get in, actively getting into my sister's car, like on the stool and backing out. And I hear that very specific FaceTime. When I can't do it. It's a very specific ringtone. So I was like, oh my God, I'm FaceTiming somebody. And I hear, hello. And I was like, oh my God, I'm sorry, Aunt Mary, oh Aunt Mary. So she said she got a new phone and she lost our numbers. And she's like, she needed our numbers. And I, I said, oh, I'm so, we're just on the way out. I didn't mean to like, you know, here's Julie. And we were going to the doctor and I'm so sorry I was getting in the car. And I don't even know how out of all the people I ended up FaceTiming you. So she's like, it's okay. We talked for a few minutes and then we had to go, obviously. So... She said, um, send me your number and Julie's number. And I was like, oh, I will, I will, I promise, you know, I'm sorry. So then we went and of course, chemo brain. She got my number from my sister-in-law, I think. She called me yesterday and she's like, oh, you never sent me, I would have I called you sooner. You were going to give me your number and I forgot. And I was like, Aunt Mary, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. So we ended up talking for quite a bit. She was asking me, how's it going? I'm, I don't know if I've ever talked much about her my aunt mary is my mom's oldest living sister um but it's actually her second oldest sister she's like the second oldest of that family and she is a nurse she is a fantastic nurse um i want to say she got her doctorate in nursing I feel like that's what I was told one time. I gotta ask her that again. 
Because that's one of those memories you're like, did I mishear that? Um, she's, I think she's just an amazing woman. She has really been through adversity like nobody's business. She's the one who's taught me everyone has their own experience. Like you and your siblings can grow up in the same house. And you will come out with different stories of an event because everyone has their own experience. Um, you know, how something is perceived. Uh, we've talked about that lots of times. It's a matter of perception. How something is perceived is based on your experience. Um, we talk about just my friends. I've taught, my, you know, not taught my friends, but I've explained to my friends or I've told my friends over the years, like, don't put inflection in text messaging. You don't know how it was intended. If you think that it's read with, if you read it with sarcasm, then you meant it was intended for that sarcasm, but you don't know it was intended as sarcasm or out of anger or whatever. I said, just read it as it is. Don't put inflection in it. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's because we each have our own experience. Like I said, she's very, she's very brilliant. Um, so she was checking up on all the things that, I, you know, how's it going and she knows about the diagnosis and she talked to my sister and um, she was just checking up on how it's been since. She knows I got my port and we talked a bit about it. And uh, I said, you know, I think that when I was getting my port, obviously when you lay down, your bosom goes more up. You guys have seen me vlog laying down, my bosom's in my neck. And plus I was a, you know, a big person and was I swollen that day? And I, I feel like, I feel like everything is way too close to the surface. Like I can see my port. I can see the heart shape of my port. I don't think you guys can see it on the camera, especially with the bruise. I think the bruise is very distracting, but I can see the heart shape. Like I could see this is where it's connected. Like this is where it's connected. Here's the heart shape. There's the part where, like I can see that. And I don't know that it's supposed to be that way. And I don't know if it's just that perception of like, well, let me get as close to the surface as I can because she's heavy. Like my nurse practitioner made it seem like it was going to be buried because I was heavy. She's like, well, you have, she said, you have ample tissue. It was such a like, cute way of saying it. She's like, you have ample tissue. So you might have to feel around. You're probably going to have to feel around for it. And on the contrary, it's right there on the surface and everything is right there on the surface. I think this part is my, like the weirdest. All of a sudden, like my waddle, and I could be losing more weight. It's not even about that, but I feel like my waddle is lopsided. Does it not look that way? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? What the waddle is? Did you ever watch Alan McBeal? <laughs> hmm? And I've done this exercise like every day for my adulthood, like to try to help with the double chin. But now I'm like, ooh, should I do that? Is that bad for my neck? Is that gonna pull that thing out? No, Jerry, it's not gonna pull the thing out or pull your stitches out, you're fine. There's no stitches, it's just tape and glue. But anyway, I got to speak to her last night. It was such a joy, it was such a joy um, to catch up. Um, she is just a wonderful inspiration. She really is. Um, and I feel like I wanted to tell you something that we talked about and I can't remember what it is. Nope. Nope. She does volunteer. So she's lived in California for most of my life. In fact, my first trip was with Sharon right before Sharon and I turned 17. We got on a plane at a 747 at the time. Um, I feel like it's Pan Am 747 um, and flew to California uh, to stay with Aunt Mary for a week. We actually spent some time. We drove down to um, River Riverside where my Uncle PJ lived to go hang out with him. We went to a um, a basketball game with my cousin Carrie at her high school. Um, just a whole like host of 
fun things that I did with her. And we went to Universal Studios. She took us to Universal Studios. It was just a lot of fun. Did we also go to Disneyland? I feel like we did. Yes. 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 We did. Pretty sure. I think I'll have to ask Sharon. Sharon remembers stuff like that. Um, but we went to stay with her and it was just, we had, we had a ball. Um, and it was such a nice trip. That was the beginning of like my love for travel. You know, it really was. Um, and when she retired, then she, she also bought a house in Mexico, but it's like on the beach in Baja and no electricity and I haven't been there. I'm the only person in my family who had not been there yet. Um, it's kind of weird because I've been to California. I think more than more than some of my siblings have actually been to California, but I haven't been to Mexico, which is just like bad, like weird circumstances. So, um, but she has this place and she said, you know, when I go to my house in Mexico, she started volunteering with like, um, an organization like uh, basically Doctors Without Borders. She volunteers um, to go into really rural, uh, the mountains of Mexico. And they, you know, she's like, we treat people who have um, never been treated. Their, di their diabetes has not been treated. Pe their hypertension has not been treated. Their cancer has not been treated. And I'm like, oh, <sighs> you know, I just, that's a lot, but she's, God bless her. She's over 80. I won't tell you her exact age, but she's over 80. Um, and she's just a blessing. She is, she is, she is the matriarch for sure. She was the one that she asked my uh, cousin Beth if she wanted something to eat. And Beth said, I'm not hungry. And my Aunt Mary said, oh, what does that feel like? Because when you grow up, like, with the love for food, and I would say obsession is probably the best way. But when you grow up with that love for food or you're addicted to food, you know, it's like you are always hungry. Um, but anyway, that was a delight to talk to her. I was really, really happy to get to talk to her. Um, yeah. And I FaceTimed with my sister Julie yesterday. She misses me. I might miss her, but she misses me. I can tell. She's like, I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm like, okay. We'll just FaceTime every day. Um, she She's making sure that I'm eating. How I'm feeling. Taking my medicine. Drinking my water. Drinking my water is very important. So. Um, hmm. Is that it? Is that all I was going to say? Probably. Why do you guys love me? I'm telling you. I'm losing it. I'm not sure I ever had it, but whatever I had, I'm losing. <laughs> well, listen, I hopefully you got to finish your cup of coffee. I'm not quite done with mine, but I enjoy this time together. So glad we had this time together. Crap. I won't. I won't do it. I won't do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I love you. If nobody else has told you today, remember that I do. And even if I leave this earthly plane way too soon, I will still love you. Don't forget. Okay? All right. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 How's that for a hairdo, folks? Yeah, I thought you'd appreciate that. Blooper reel. <laughs>